Hey everyone, welcome to Layer Lab. My name is Martin and today we're going to be talking about how to get your 3D prints to not only look really good, but be really strong as well. We're going to be looking at how to print this hand. But the techniques that I'm going to be showing you are pretty broad and can be applied to many other 3D models out there. As you can see, it has these nimble little fingers that can break quite easily. So let's figure out how to make these as strong as possible so they can stand up to a bit of bashing around. Now, if you were to print this laying down, it would be really strong, but wouldn't look very good. But if you were to print it standing up, it would look really good, but it wouldn't be very strong. So here is where diagonal printing comes in. Now, when you print on an angle, the ley lines shift from horizontal or vertical to diagonal. The weakest part of a 3D model are the ley lines. Oriented horizontally, they're pretty weak oriented vertically, they're pretty strong. But now that our layer lines are diagonal, we get the best of both worlds. But it doesn't come without its own set of challenges. Printing diagonally causes the center mass to change, meaning that we're gonna have to figure out how to get the model to stay perfectly still throughout the entire printing process without falling over. There are a bunch of methods that you could use to do this, but here's one that I find works well. Now, if your 3D model has a straight edge like mine, then printing diagonally will be quite difficult to do. This is because there is only one single line connecting the 3D model to the print bed. So because of this one line adhesion, the print will eventually start to wobble and then completely fail. So how do we increase the surface area between the 3D model and the print bed? All you need to do is create a small flat edge on your model. Now you could do this in a program like FreeCAD or Blender, but I've found the easiest way to do this is in Cura itself. Simply import your 3D model, select rotate, uncheck snap rotation, and rotate your model to around the 45 degree mark. At 45 degrees, every layer is in about 50% contact with the layer beneath it, allowing it to print well. Depending on your printer and how well you calibrated it, you may be able to push this angle even further to 50 or even 60 degrees. The bigger the angle, the stronger your print will be, but the harder it will be to print. Now, before you start printing diagonally, it's always a good idea to do an overhang test to see how far you can push your printer before it will fail. Looks like I can probably push this to around 60 degrees with no problem. But to be on the safe side for the video, I'll keep it at 45. As we are printing with overhangs, I recommend having your cooling fan at 100% to ensure each layer cools quickly enough to support the next. Also, use a small layer height such as 0.16 instead of 0.2, as this means your overhangs will be less aggressive and you can push your angles a little bit further. Now it's time to create that flat edge by pushing your model through the build plate. Depending on what you have your support overhang angle set to, you'll notice there are a bunch of red areas on your model where Cura is going to place supports. It's easy to remove the supports you don't want by using a support blocker. Select the support blocker and click on any of the red areas where you don't want supports. If you have random supports extruding out the model itself, just change the support placement to touching build plate and that should take care of them. The only two places I want supports are at the base and under the two fingers. You can always place your own supports by using a support blocker and converting them into supports. Once you have angled your model, fixed your supports and adjusted your settings, you are now ready to print. Now we have three lines connecting the model to the print bed instead of one. Now this is going to significantly help with the adhesion and keeping that model perfectly still throughout the printing process. Now, as you can see, this small model prints perfectly, but if you have a slightly larger model that has a bit more weight to it, then you may need some custom supports. Depending on the size and the shape of it, you may need a fin. And there is another YouTuber who covers this, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now, as you can see, the edge is barely noticeable on this model. But if this edge doesn't look very good on your 3D model, try incorporating it into the rest of the object to help the edge blend in a bit more. Now, because I don't have a tensile tester, the next best thing I could come up with was to push the fingers against a scale and see how far it gets until it breaks. I use the middle finger for each test to keep things consistent. Now, to start us off, we have the hand that I printed vertically. So this should be the weakest model. Um, but I think it held out to about 4. Point, yeah, about 4.7, which was okay. Now we're testing the hand that was printed at a 45 degree angle. We can see that it goes straight past 4.7 and gets to 5.8, which was interesting. That's about a kilo more. And then we come to the hand that was printed horizontally and <laughs> I actually couldn't break it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I even tried using two hands and um, the fingers just would not snap off. Hopefully this video has helped and I'll see you in the next one.